Hello and this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some of the new updates in regards to superconductors. Not just any superconductors, potentially a revolutionary type of superconductors that the scientists decided to name Red Matter. An unusual superconductor that seems to be able to operate in conditions much closer to typical room conditions that we're kind of used to. And in this case, by itself this discovery is already groundbreaking but it sort of created quite a lot of friction and quite a lot of controversy for a few reasons I wanted to discuss in this video. And so let's discuss exactly what happened here, what the scientists discovered, and why this very strange element that you see right here could actually be revolutionary after all. First, I guess a super quick summary of what exactly we're talking about. Superconductivity is basically a quantum property. It's a property that arises in a lot of different elements in very certain conditions, for example when you lower temperatures of certain metals. And in this case you can see magnetic levitation. This is a result of what's known as the Meissner effect, which literally allows various objects, very cold objects, to float around without any resistance. But the more intriguing property of superconductivity is the fact that it conducts electricity without any resistance, which would actually allow for extremely efficient technology, basically helping us reach a completely new state of industrial revolution. But as you can see from this graph, there's actually been a kind of a progress in terms of our ability to discover various elements that are able to reach this critical temperature of superconductivity at higher and higher temperatures. So even though a lot of this started in extremely cold temperatures close to the absolute zero, in the last few decades there's actually been a dramatic development in various new materials. For example, between 2015 and 2020, the scientists were able to create different compounds that can become superconductive at nearly the room temperature, with one major caveat. It had to be in extreme pressures, pressures very similar to, for example, what we find inside Jupiter. And here on Earth, these pressures are usually achieved using a technology known as diamond anvil cell, which sort of looks like this. Two diamonds putting a lot of pressure on something right between them, creating enormous pressures in the process. And so in a video from, I guess, a few years ago, we've discussed some of these discoveries and some of these announcements of so-called room temperature superconductors, or basically elements that did become superconducting, but in conditions of ridiculous pressure. And the thing is, one of these announcements was from the same team, the team behind this recent paper as well. And back then when the announcement was made, it created a bit of a controversy. Apparently, other scientists had trouble recreating their results. And on top of this, some of the data submitted to the paper might have been analyzed differently from how it should have been analyzed. And so unfortunately, initially this paper was retracted. Which by the way, if you're a scientist, is a huge deal. Having your paper retracted from Nature magazine is a pretty big blow to the reputation of those scientists. And so it took a few years for the scientists behind this paper to provide just enough data for this to be then resubmitted years later. I'm leaving these retraction notes in the description below if you want to read them yourself. And so, long story short, even though there might have been an actual discovery made in that particular scientific paper, because of several disagreements and because of a lot of complaints, and because of that retraction of the paper, this sort of created a pretty big issue for the same scientists wanting to continue doing this research. Now, all of the research would be met with a lot of extra scrutiny. Which is why seeing this paper published in Nature magazine by pretty much the same team was very surprising. It means that despite all of the checking and double checking and triple checking that they must have gone through for many many months prior to the publication, the Nature editors seem to have agreed that they did actually discover something in this case after all. And so I wanted to talk a little bit more about how they thought about all of this and how this team was able to potentially discover a way for us to find even more superconductors that can function in room temperatures. One of the discoveries coming from a few years ago was the fact that hydrides, or different molecules containing hydrogen in them, and usually hydrides with heavier atoms like sulfur or various metals, seem to be specifically good at becoming superconductors. And very likely because hydrogen, and actually a lot of hydrogen, seems to increase superconductivity in various elements. And although the majority of initial research focused on combining a lot of more complex elements, creating these really really complex molecules, a lot of recent research with a lot of high temperature superconductors was really mostly focusing on hydrogen, and usually a lot of it. One good example here is something known as lantanum decahydride, which is basically the metal lactanum surrounded by 10 atoms of hydrogen. Turns out it does become a superconductor at relatively high temperatures, but also very high pressures. And so the goal here was always the same, try to raise the temperature even higher, closer to room temperature, but also try to lower the pressure. Here the pressure was still too high. 
And so now there was a goal to find more candidates that we could attach more hydrogen to, to create these superconductors. And the idea here was to actually look at how the electrons in those atoms were structured overall in order to then interact with hydrogen. With one potential candidate being lutetium. Here the scientists realized that it can maybe create a relatively stable formation with hydrogen and possibly something else, for example nitrogen. In other words, if it was combined with hydrogen and nitrogen, it would form a necessary three-dimensional structure for the electrons to then flow without resistance, possibly with just a little bit of pressure added. And so in order to produce this, they created a relatively thin layer of lutetium covered in 99% hydrogen and about 1% nitrogen, cooking all of this for a few days in 200 degrees Celsius. The overall structure resembled something like this. This was then inserted into the diamond anvil cell, but at pretty much room temperatures, 21 degrees Celsius. And then the scientists started to see how all of this reacts to various pressures. And so even though at first this chemical was somewhat bluish, it then became pink and superconductive, after which it became red and non-superconductive again. Because of that strange transition of colors, they decided to give it a somewhat Star trek name, red matter. Although as you can see from this graph, it only becomes superconductive at room temperature at a very specific pressure. And also the pressure itself is not really that low, it's about 1 gigapascal or nearly 10,000 atmospheric pressures. So definitely still higher than what we expect from a regular room, but dramatically lower than previous experiments and dramatically lower than a lot of other conditions used in a lot of other manufacturing. But the fact that they provided so much data that definitively showed that electrons in this case no longer generate resistance most likely suggests that they did make a groundbreaking discovery. But I guess more importantly, they now have a pretty solid understanding of what can potentially turn things superconductive at room temperatures and how even more elements can be discovered which may require even less pressure. At some point, the ultimate goal is of course a superconductor that works in room temperature and of course room pressure. Based on this graph, it looks like we're still pretty far from that, but this unusual new chemical with these very specific properties and color changes is definitely an interesting discovery. And so despite the initial controversial result from their previous paper, a lot of scientists are now pretty confident that nature editors and various reviewers very likely did a very thorough analysis this time, making sure that this paper is as legit as it claims. In this case, the scientists behind this paper even mentioned that they basically gave them every possible piece of data they had and everything was provided without any questions. So I don't think there's any reason to doubt that anything in the paper is illegitimate. But in terms of the actual practicality of this research, well, there are definitely already patents planned for this and there's a big chance a lot of this is going to result in a lot of money made for someone, but our daily lives are unlikely to change just yet. All of this still requires extremely expensive laboratory equipment and obviously very high pressure. So don't expect any super batteries that can run for days and even weeks or any other improvements in our energy grid just yet. But these are important first steps in helping us improve the technology later on. And basically another dot on this graph that takes us just a little bit closer to the ultimate superconductor. As a matter of fact, if you see here, the previous records required almost 300 times as much pressure. So requiring only one gigapascal is already huge progress. But for now, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Once there are more discoveries, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. If you've enjoyed this video, check out some of the previous videos on this topic in the description below. Maybe subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.